Hi, James. Morning. How are you? Uh, morning, Kelsey. Yes. It, it's been uh, 15 years since I met you. For well, quite a long time. Huh? <laughs> but I did meet you at the book launch, remember? At uh, oh, yeah. Woodlands. Oh, yeah. Yeah, have you been keeping yourself busy? Yeah, I just uh, spend most of the time in the library. But mm -hmm. I also do much, very little block. Tired mm -hmm. <laughs> Already, I was up to have the best. Yeah, the block is about 15 years old, also, right? Yeah, yeah, a bit old. A long time ago. <laughs> you told me before that you lived in. Uh, the Bukit Ho Swee Kampong uh, before yeah. the 1961 fire. Could you describe the Kampong for us? Yes. I was born in uh, 1948 uh, in Havelock Road, which is... Later on, I moved to other places. Finally, uh, in 60, 1959, yes. I was at this number 21A Bill Lane. Now, this is uh, one of those single room houses where I stay with my father, my mother, and two sisters. And see, it's a tap house, and uh, one roll of uh, these houses. The tenants are there were about six of them. Okay. Now there is no light, no water. So for the light, normally when I study I have to use the, those lamps. Huh? And uh, water there's there's a public uh, but which I had to bring the water into my house. Yeah. So when I was there, I started with studying uh, in this, uh, this Chinese uh, school for only two years. Two years is uh, standard for. And then after that, I, I was uh, registered in a Buddhist school at the Data Primary School. The first school, the Chinese school, was Skycock, was it? Yes, it's Skycock, correct. Uh, so that was near your house, isn't it? Uh, yes, very near to my house. That's why I, every day, if I go and just walk, walk to the school. <laughs> so... What I would say is, uh, you know, uh, from the school days at the uh, it's uh, very carefree, you see, because uh, there's no much of traffic. And now, uh, you know, I just help my mother, you know, and you will feel some chicken and some ducks. And also do some, uh, you know, planting, you know, the chili, uh, uh, bitter gold, all that. And so, yes. How so, many of you, you were in the family? Uh, with two elder sisters, my father and my mother. So five of us, all in one room. So my father had to, you know, in the kitchen, in the night time, my father would sleep in the campus bed. Uh, what job was your father doing? Oh, my father, since uh, since I was young, he, he is a bookkeeper, you know, doing Chinese accounts, in one of the this uh trading school, a uh, trading shop. Near near the Singapore River. Mm. I only studied four years of education. Two years ah, uh, but they got it one before. Every year there are two standards. You see? Mm. So, uh, two years is four four standard. 
Ah, okay. Uh, what about your mother? Uh, did she work? My mother. Yes. My mother is is not working. Housewife. Do you remember your neighbors at uh, Bio Lane? Neighbors, uh, very few. But I know the one of the sons of the landlord. Uh, actually, is rearing this uh, fighting fish. So every time they will use this fighting fish, you know, like it's kind of a bad thing, you see. Gain money and he seems to have a lot of winners. Mm. Did you do that also? No, no, no. He, he will give those, those already after fighting the fish will give to me to play. Can you say a bit more about Kai Kok? Uh, it was one of the schools that was burned down during the fire, right? Yes. Hmm. It was burned down. Uh, well, uh, how I say? That, that one is a uh, private school. Private Chinese school. Yeah. And uh, well, the teachers are quite good. You know, because young days, uh, uh, they are very kind to the students. Hmm. The school was a, how, how was the school? It was a wooden uh, building school. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, you know, the walls, and uh, I think it's zinc roof. Uh, so it's, it's, it's actually a wooden school. Why, why did your uh, parents transfer you to the Delta Primary School? Yeah, because my, my mother say that actually I should uh, study English. Uh, then that's why that's why you know uh, stop uh, at uh, Kaikok. How long did you all stay at Biolin? I start at uh, 19, 1959, 59, 59 to 61. So three over years okay. until the fire. Until the fire, right. Uh, Okay. So basically, uh, 59, 63 years. Uh. And before 59, where did you all live? There was also a one-room house opposite because they want to increase the rent. Mm. Ah, okay. So the family basically stay at Bukit Ho Swee, Kampong uh, yeah, yeah. since you were born. Tell us a bit about the life in the kampong. You know, most of us, uh, you know, younger people in Singapore never had a chance to live in the kampong. Uh, how was life in the kampong? Life in the fight, how I say, I think that the best time is, as I say, is uh, carefree. So that, you know, there are all those games uh, that now people don't play, like they <clears throat> make those kites. So when they meet the kites, they would fight and then they would run after the kites, which was very dangerous. Yeah, but that is the one day, one we have fun. Why was it dangerous? Sorry? Why was it dangerous? Because even when um, the kites, you know, is near on the road, then there are cars going around. So they, they cannot stop <laughs> mm. the children. They just dash across the road. Lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you are referring to Havelock Road, right? Yes, that's right. Right, right. Uh, they will be maybe climb, climb the trees uh, if the, if the uh, kite stop in the trees. And this was uh, fighting kites also, right? Kite fighting. Kite fighting, yes. They, 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 anybody would, but the thing now is, you know, the, the kite is not just for flying. It is the, the these are uh, strings that they use. They will go and bring some uh, glasses. Then after that, some glue. Then, then it means to say that the, the string is not a simple string. It's one that if once it attack another one, uh, so 
Very sharp, huh? the string is quite sharp. Oh, yeah, very sharp, very sharp. <laughs> Tell us about that day when the fire broke out. Uh, the day of the fire, okay, that, that is uh, 25th May 1961. It's the day of the fire. And that happened to be a Hari Raya Haji. Uh, so in the morning, uh, my mother and I went to Jin Sui Street for my uh, uh, second auntie's house. So because uh, our elder auntie has a ceremony, you see, after passing away. So when I went back to Bukit Ho Street, around 3.30, uh, that, that is where I see the, you know, why so crowded and then when I look at the sky, all, you know, dark clouds and then uh, toxic, you know, the air. Yeah. And I, I look at it like very exciting. <laughs> so when my mother saw me this way, quickly pull me back to this uh, 21A building. And because my mother had gone through the days uh, in Japanese, uh, you know, uh, during the Japanese. So he has kept all the important things in, in the south. It means uh, mostly uh, our documents or I see the certificate uh, and then to run away. So, my mother and I ran out of the <clears throat> building, then uh, went to this uh, Prince Philip Avenue, you know, just near when all the black men were avoid from the fire. Mm. For that, my mother's friend, you know, met us and said, uh, give us a lift in her car. Uh, to this uh, River Valley School, you know, just opposite the Great Pool, where, you know, we ask about one week to stay in the school. It's quite interesting that your mother had the foresight, you know, to prepare, you know, keeping all these important documents and belongings in a, yeah. in a bag, right? Yeah, a lot of, yeah, a lot of this, you know, they have experience in the Japanese occupation days. They know that, you know, these are very important things to do. Mm. Did she manage to save other items in the house? No, because there are some people who carry all sorts of unnecessary things. So without just with the sarong, it's easier for us to, you know, run away from the police. I guess well, there was a holiday. So was your father working on that day? Yeah, still working. My father was working. My sisters were also working. Yeah. So when people know, they went to the school to look for us. So it was just your mother and you at the scene of the fire? Yeah, yeah. I didn't see the scene. Uh, no. After that, I read all this. It's really crazy because the the fire started from this uh Tiambaru site and then moved on up to Havon. Do you remember how your mother reacted to the fire? Yeah. How how she felt about the fire? Yeah, of course. You saying then what what is going to happen to us? Yeah. Then uh just the house is gone. Then later on, we had temporarily about a week stay at Margaret Run. Yeah. So after that, then I located the house of the one room emergency flat at Jalan Bukit Wasu. So basically, um, your family lost all, all your belongings, all your yeah, gone. Mm. 
maybe just with some some of the clothes clothing that we have. So it's to start life all by myself. Do you know uh, what were some of the items that you all lost that maybe you know a bit more expensive items at, at home? Very few uh, because we are we're very poor. Don't, so I don't think that there, there are many uh say jewelries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean at the time the family belongings would be some furniture, I guess. Some furniture. Yeah. Well some they are cannot cannot too too heavy to bring home. Mm -hmm. Anything electrical at home? Electrical appliance? Very few, so <laughs> <laughs> how about your school uh uh, your textbooks, uh, all that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. school textbook. Luckily, there were. No, I think uh, one of the church, you know, gave us money for our school uniform, our shoes, our textbook, textbook. Hmm. I guess at the time you were very young. I mean, how did your parents feel about? Uh, the situation that you all were in after the fire? Well, I think they feel it's okay, you know, used to the, especially, you know, uh, this, this, uh, during the fire happened to be my primary six when I have my PSLE. So still managed just to pass. <laughs> oh, you're having the PSLE at the end of the year? Yes, yes, yes. In your school, uh, Delta was not affected by the fire, right? Oh, no, no. That was across the road. Mm. Okay. So you went back to school soon after? La. Yeah, that's right. Tell us about the... Um, so there was uh, some temporary housing that you all lived at Margaret Drive. Uh, and subsequently, you got a... The family got a, a flat in uh, Jalan Bukit yeah. Ho Sui. Can you tell us where it is? That one is, uh, I think, also removed already. It's, it's a uh, rental flat that has not been allocated. That is why the fire victims uh, were given a chance to stay there. Mm -hmm. Because when this is being done, you know, the Jalan Bukit Ho Sui, emergency flats uh, was building and they they, they, they took very good, nine months to complete the building which block were you all given uh i stay at uh block nine jalan bukit Osui, block nine uh, okay this was a uh, one room emergency flat yes that's right they have six stories uh there were no leaf yeah, and uh, you know, the these tenants there, they they don't have a toilet, so it is a common toilet to be shared by the fire victims. How did you feel about sharing toilets? Huh? How did you feel sharing about sharing to oh. toilets? Especially when going to school, I have to be the earliest. You know, the, otherwise there'll be a long queue, you know. Yeah. Because the from what I understand, the toilets were at the end of the corridor, right? In the center. In the center. In the center, yeah. And that's how they live. So they, they have a cover. Then I think it's about six six uh, toilets by each one. Sorry? There's, there are six toilets. Yeah. Per, then, per story, is it? Yes. Okay. No, every ah. floor. Every, every floor. Every floor, there, there's three, three, room, three toilets on one side, one left, one right. See? So I think everybody needs to use that uh, before going ah. to work or going to sleep. Then there's a wall that covered, we know that there is a toilet. And male and female toilets. No, 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 no. Me and huh? female, all, all mix, all mix. Me and female can use. <laughs> okay, so the toilet was just basically one one stall, right? Mm. Each toilet is one stall. You can just go in and lock it. 
Yes, yes. Okay. Toilet must have been smelly. Shed <laughs> Very heavily used, you know. Yeah. And uh, was the kitchen also shared? Kitchen, Kitchen, yeah. no, no, not our own use. No, you have your own kitchen. And one is for the bathroom. Sorry? One bathroom and one kitchen, that's all. Ah, uh, okay. It's so, very small, only one room. All right. So actually, the room uh, has, uh, has its own bathroom, just not its own toilet. Yes, correct. <laughs> <laughs> Why they build like that, huh? <laughs> yeah. Save, save the space. Yeah. So James, can I ask you, uh, when it comes to the allocation of housing after the fire, did your family consider moving to another campo instead of the HDB? No, I was I think almost all the those you know, of uh, those what at their uh, wooden houses, all, all gone, all burned. You see, so there's no place to, to look for a house, yeah. But well, they, they allocate to all the uh, fire priority for the uh, fire victims, yes, yes. Uh, but there were other kampongs around, right? I mean, uh, across the road, there was Kampong Tiong Baru. And there were further kampongs in the area also. Was no, that an option? Only once. Not as big as this, uh, mm. you know, 1961 fire. Mm. Were your parents uh, glad to move into uh, Block 9? Well, I find it more convenient, is it? Uh. Mm. Cleaner and also don't have the uh, fire hazard. Did they have to adjust to living in a in a modern flat compared to a kampong house? Yeah, I think so. I have to. Mm. Because we will stay on the first story. So every, every day I have to use the staircase. How about yourself? Moving from a attap house to a flat. How did you feel about that? Well, I, I found it's cleaner and then, you know, can get tap, can get tap, you know, then there's uh, no need to use the, the these uh, lamps uh, for light. It's quite amazing, right? When you turn on the tap and the water comes out, the clean yeah, water. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, um, I... Remember, the government gave some subsidies and some assistance to the families after yes. the fire. So, did that help uh, your family to recover from the fire and build up again? I think so. Yeah, quite, quite good. You know, depending on the number of, uh, you know, family. Yes. How long did you stay at uh, Block Nine? Long line, I think stay about, about three years. And after that, we uh, rented the three room flat at the Jalan Rumah Tinggi. Hmm. A lot of people, yeah. the why they, they have, uh, you know, remove all the one room flats. Mm. They demolish them, right? Yes, correct. Mm. Rumatingi is nearby, isn't it? Not say very near, it's more to the uh, Queen's, Queenstown side. Uh, near okay. Jalan, Jalan Rumatingi is near Jalan uh, Bukit Merah. Right, right. Yeah, it's near Bukit Merah. Um, that was a bigger house, better. Mm. Mm. You have uh, you don't have to share toilets anymore, right? <laughs> no, no. One three room is quite comfortable. What would you like people to know about Bukit Ho Swee? Yeah, so basically, it's it's, it's just uh, people young after 
HDB start building all the more and more these flats, uh, and they have to uh, for sales of flats to uh, Singaporeans. Uh, that, that, that's why I think the, the, the fire itself have you know, more or less initiated the um, change. You know, like for instance, now compared to Okay, uh, we it's very different. All, all those are high rise flats. So, do you think that the fire was a very important event in our history? Well, these sort of things, you know, in fact, any, anybody who stay in the, that, at that flat, uh, every day is thinking, uh, I don't know what is going to happen. So the risk is there. It can start very easily. The risk of fire, you mean? Yes, yes, very great risk. Actually, at the time, there were a number of efforts uh, by the government and also by the community to set up firefighting squads. And there were also mm. firefighting squads in Kampung Bukit Ho Swee as well. Well, nothing they can do. Lah. Because all this, even the fire cannot go into the, the fire site at that time. And also, uh, we may not have enough water, uh, water to <laughs> you know, stop the fire. Yeah. Yeah, you you were saying the fire engines cannot go into the kampong, right? Yes, yes. Mm. You know, maybe you can describe. You find a hemlock road, you know, the, the the building, the MCA building, mm. the only one that can be saved by them. Yeah, because that wasn't at that. That that was a concrete house. Yes, yes. Still around today. Yeah, I hope that they live there. Otherwise, they be fully done also. Yeah, yeah, they're still selling a lot of uh, good uh, Teochew porridge there. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, my uh, my old block is gone already. Block 29 is gone. 22, 29, no more, is it? No more. They demolished oh. it a few years ago. Now it's flat. Yeah. Well, last time you stayed with your grandmother. My grandparents, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> my, school, my school is also gone. Havelock school is gone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Havelock school is gone, really. Your block is gone long ago, lah, right? Block nine is gone long ago. I'm lying. Oh, long ago, long. There was a a very lively entertainment area over there, mm. right? The Great World. Yeah. Do you have any memories? Great World, Great World, is it? Yes. We are Great World is my favorite. <laughs> yeah, the first time that my mother will be there and especially when they have this exhibition you know yeah it's uh, best entertainment for children that time what did you do there did, did uh, were there movies there or were there games there oh no i used to watch movie there because there's one that's atlantic atlantic mostly those uh chinese uh the, Martial art movie. Because for 50 cents, I can see two frames. <laughs> ah, wow. Yes, yes. Back um, to back, is it? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> mm. That's about three hours of watching movies. Yes, that's right. Now is is near is now is replaced by the MRT, right? Which one? Great World. No, no, it's it, it's a uh, it's a condo, and yeah. then those shops. Yes. Yeah, talking about that, right? Uh, when was the last time you were back in Bukit Ho Swee? Back in Bukit Ho Swee. Yeah. Uh, once in a while, uh, just. Uh, oh, but find that everything cannot recognize. <laughs> I mean, what what has uh, what what is still there now? The Biole Market is still there, right? Bill Crescent, right? Uh, we call it Bill Crescent now. Yeah. The market is still there. Oh, yes, yeah, still there. Uh, community center is still there, Kim Seng Community Center. Mm. Uh, oh, there, there are a lot of nice stores in the food court there. 
You are talking about the which one? Bill 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 Crescent. Bill Crescent Food Court. Which one is good? Which which food is good? Yeah, those uh what fried kway teow, lor mee, all this thing. I think many of those are five 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 victims also. Hmm. Mm. They have stayed there all these years, yeah. Never yeah, moved up. For, for many years. Hmm. But now there are so many of those uh, huge condos in the area, right? Opposite the MCA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Havelock View, they call it Havelock View. Is it called Havelock View? Yes. I think last time your this block 29, uh, traditional will also be high, high, high rising building. I mean, last time it's like six stories or nine stories considered very high, right? Yes. But now, uh, you know, you have 25 or 30. Yeah. yeah, correct. Do you like to live in high rise? It can be able to. But it's a lot of privacy uh, mm. compared to, to uh, Kampong. I remember we once took a walk around Bukit Ho Swee. It's a dig eat, right? Oh, Dick Evans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, those days, they don't go for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Any feelings about uh, Bukit Ho Swee? Yeah, these are good memories. Yeah, which, uh, because the youngsters are very lucky. Yeah. Uh, that type of uh, kampung life. Now, Singapore don't have any kampung life. Do you think we we can recover that, you know, kampong spirit, that Koto Royong? Yeah. yeah. How, how should we do that? I think very different uh, because of the, you know, circumstances there. Uh, they, they find that, you know, I mean, they, they, they don't have like, now if you stay in HD, you don't even know who are your neighbors. <laughs> True. Yeah, it was a much better time, right? Uh, you know, when you can leave your door open and, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. people to come in. Yeah. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So when you first moved into Block 9, did you feel that that Kampong spirit was already disappearing or it was still there? Oh, still have because you, you find that they, what they do, most of them will be uh they are fire victims and all that place. Uh, then they leave the door open and uh, try to chit chat along the corridor. Yeah. Are you still blogging these days? Huh? Are you still Not blogging? No. <laughs> yeah. Tired. <laughs> Tired. <laughs> mm. You know our group, right? The group that you set up. Right. Tell us about this group. I grew up in Bukit Ho Swee. Oh, yeah. That one, yeah, it's quite good. I, I left it on the Facebook. Yeah. 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 So, so many of them are the grandchildren, I can tell them. No, otherwise, if they go down to this uh, Bukit Ho Swee, cannot recognize the place. Why did you set up that group? No. Hmm? Why did you set up that group? Oh, yeah, because I want to learn more from them uh, under different situations. Yes. You want to learn from them? Of course, I mean, we, we are different parts of Bukit Ho Swee. Yeah. So they will tell the, the story, how, uh, in fact, there are some video already, you know, as say, you know, wow, well, they, you know, even the, the this uh, what they call that sewing machine, uh, try to bring home, but then rather than the children themselves. I'll let the listeners know that uh, currently the group has more than uh, 2,800 members. Is it so? Oh, that's good. Thank Thanks you. to you, James. You know, you did a great job to create that group. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Captain. Uh, you know, uh, and 
they are quite enthusiastic to share, you know, but also to learn uh, what the history of Bukit Ho Swee is. Yes. You know, I don't think many uh, places in Singapore, right, have that kind of memory and, you know, cohesion in a sense, right? That, yes. you know, this is a special yes. place somehow. Right? <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you for, for us to share these stories. Yeah, and uh, we will still be on the Facebook group. I grew up in Bukit Ho Swee. Please check it out. And sure. uh, James, uh, please uh, continue to blog, continue to write on the Facebook group. And mm. uh, we, we want to hear your memories as well. Thank, Thank you very you much, much, James. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.